The mystery of FNAF Security Breach's Client 46 is one that still plagues us even after the game has been torn to shreds. There is no mention of a name or any other names with Client 46, and whoever it is doesn't even speak. So who is this mysterious Client 46, and could it be Gregory? That's what we're exploring today. Let's do it. First, let's see what we know about the client just based on what's in the recordings and not compare it to anyone else, so we can form an objective profile of Client 46. In their first tape, we get the therapist saying, quote, you know, everyone associated with this company gets performance reviews, right? Which means that they're associated with a company, which most would assume to be Fazbear Entertainment. However, they're asked in another tape if, quote, do you know a place called Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex? I'll take your silence as a yes. And besides, I know you know it because the technicians who work for Pizzaplex know you. Or rather, I guess it would be better to say they think they do. Which means that they wouldn't be dealing with Fazbear Entertainment. Otherwise, they would know about the Pizzaplex because they know the company, not because the technicians know them. We know that the fourth therapist characterizes them as a loner, and their second therapist considers them a hacker, mentioning their aptitude with technology. Client 46 also has a relatively normal family, but lies to the therapist about having a trouble past. They hacked some form of system and glitched out some of the animatronics, was caught on tape talking to what the therapist described as rabbit ears, and they remain unbothered when finding out two of their former therapists went missing and one was found dead mangled in machinery. As if they're used to death and or already knew about the therapists. So those are all the things we know as fact for Client 46. However, there's also some stuff we can infer, but since it's me connecting the dots, there may be some accidental bias. So I'm keeping this separate from the rest of the facts. The client here does appear to be younger. Given the tonal shift between the therapists, between when they're talking to Vanessa and talking to Client 46, which could be the reason the tapes with Vanessa were included. Going back to the age issue, when being asked about encrypted communications, which seem to be manipulative in nature, the therapist says, quote, well, the texts say it looked to them like it was an attempt to manipulate you, or maybe to lure you somewhere. This is the same language used when educating kids about predators and online safety. Hell, I'm pretty sure I feel like I've heard that exact line in grade school. So how can we know if this is specifically Gregory, you ask? Like, sure, it, it's a young boy, but how could we know if it's Gregory if we aren't actually, like, given a name? There are a couple clues to indicate this. Firstly, he is associated with some company related to Fazbear Entertainment. We know it's probably not Fazbear Entertainment directly, but with the technicians sending over footage of one of your clients, you can guess that the companies are related. So it would most likely be a subsidiary of Fazbear Entertainment. Using the other disks as a time frame, we know that Vanessa has not yet been promoted to security guard, and that Lewis, the IT guy from FNAF AR, is currently working in marketing, not IT. So at least disk 1 takes place before FNAF AR. And seemingly by disk 5, they're in their spots that they were in during FNAF AR, with IT questioning Vanessa's search history. This leads me to the conclusion that the company they're associated with is the one controlling the distribution and creation of the animatronics and special delivery. But what companies have we seen that control renting out and creating animatronics? That's right, Afton Robotics. Present in sister location and the reason there was no Funtime Chica in that game, but why there was one in Ultimate Custom Night. The company being named after, and originally run by the one who caused the company's rep to plummet in the first place, would also understandably have psyche valves for anyone associated with them. So it explains that as well. So, running with this idea that Afton Robotics is controlling the FNAF AR animatronics, how does Gregory fit into all of this? Well, for that, we need to work out who this potential bunny-eared person is. Some assume Glitchtrap, some think it's Vanny, it could also technically be Burntrap. However, the therapist never really gives us a color of the ears, only the detail that they look like bunny ears. Burntrap's ears are horrifically destroyed, so he's out. Glitchtrap is a computer code with no physical form, so that just leaves Vanny, which also discounts the theory that Client 46 is Vanny. This also makes sense with the timeline of the CDs, since Vanessa mentions making a bunny costume in Disc 11, moves to a new location after Disc 12, and the bunny ears are mentioned on Disc 15. The disc after that is also the last one with Client 46, knowing that they aren't coming back. 
This to me suggests that Vanessa and Gregory moved around the same time, which would also explain why Gregory was being evaluated since he was associated with the company through Vanessa, although that can't be confirmed. But there are also other odd details that I picked up on that I wanted to address, like how we never hear Client 46 talk, but they do end up responding, as we see in Discs 6 and 8. They say something, but the recording doesn't pick it up, or their response is wiped out, much like how Gregory was wiped from the Pizzaplex's system. 46 also shows up to the Pizzaplex randomly, unannounced, despite not working there, and in the picture that showcased the bunny ears, we can also hear that the camera is distorted around them but that the therapist still says that the blob, I guess, looks like Client 46. So why would the camera be distorted around us? Seems to me like it could be when you take a picture of a computer screen with your phone and you get those like lines going across the screen, or like how shapeshifters in Supernatural have the laser eyes when they're on camera. It seems like this person isn't entirely human, perhaps part robot. Robot speculation aside, I feel confident in the fact that Client 46 is Gregory. The only issue I have now is why was he hacking the animatronics? He definitely had a purpose, since to quote Disc 16, what I understand is that the glitch stopped being a glitch and turned into an intentional set of subroutines that were aimed at creating the same thing the glitch created. Those subroutines seem to have come from you. Can you explain that? And don't worry there, Doc, I think I can explain it. There is either a good or evil motive for this hack, and I don't really know which is more likely, but I have a feeling as to which ones. But let's look at both. The evil motive would be that Gregory is working with William and Vanessa, so he hacked the animatronics and made sure that the glitch he caused instilled itself into the robots so that his work wouldn't be undone, to perhaps distract them from what's going on underneath the pizzaplex, hence why he would be talking to Vanny all nonchalant, like seems to be the case in that photo I mentioned. The good intention, however, which is the one I think would push the story further ahead and is probably the more likely one, is that Gregory is indeed a crying child robot. He learned of his father's misdeeds and whatnot over the years and before being transferred into the next aged up model, he ran away. Over the next 40 some odd years, he would learn about coding in order to hopefully be able to counter what his father had been doing. But once he heard of the FNAF 6 fire, he figured it was all over. Once Fazbear Entertainment came back with a VR game and a special delivery system for new animatronics though, he realized what he needed to do. So he got on Vanessa's good side through possible manipulation and looking like a five year old to get close to the company. He lied about his family history to the therapist so that they would keep seeing him and he would have more time in the company building so that he could then hack the animatronics causing them to malfunction in an effort to get the company or the project at least shut down, hence why the glitch ended up being a closed loop where it kept replicating itself so it couldn't be deleted. But when the company didn't shut down and instead built a giant mall complex, Gregory went to investigate, hacking the cameras in an effort to conceal his identity, which resulted in him finding the Vanny mask and learning that Vanessa was under his father's control. Since the line about the bunny ears goes, quote, you're talking to someone or something, it's hard to tell. But it also being a still shot, we don't know if he is really talking or just shocked or talking to himself about the situation. 46 talking to themselves had also been well established at this point. He could have also lost his memory when he climbed inside of Freddy, because he could have been inside Freddy when he was being repaired and it could have just caused a whole lot of issues. This association with Vanessa and Vanny, however, is why he's willing to get ice cream with her after the princess quest ending. That's still the only way to explain it. Them knowing each other is the only reason he would get ice cream with a woman who just spent six hours trying to kill him. And it explains how he knows to complete the Princess Quest games in order to save her soul. There we have it friends, is Gregory Client 46? I'm confident in my answer, so yes he is. Until some other thing comes out, confirming that this is false, I will personally believe this to be the case. What do you think though? Be sure you let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been in Shower Me, Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.